This presentation will be on the dietary management in the inborn errors of metabolism. Now, uh, this presentation will focus purely and purely on the dietary aspect. Uh, inborn errors of metabolism is known to be one of those dreaded topics for a lot of people, myself included. It is something which is thought to be very complicated and intricate as far as the management, pathogenesis, enzyme deficiency and clinical features is concerned. Now, I am stressing on this point initially that this presentation only focuses upon the dietary management and does not generally go into any aspects of which enzyme is deficient, what is the pathway, which substrate accumulates and any of that, so on and so forth. So, uh, before starting the presentation as such, I would like to make a special acknowledgement to Professor Dr. Srinivasan Sir, Senior Professor and Registrar at Institute of Child Health and Hospital, Egmore, Chennai. Uh, sir is the one who taught this class in a very simplified manner and made the basics very clear and understandable with which I am able to go ahead with this presentation. And also a special thank you to the thousand subscribers of the YouTube channel because a thousand is a very special milestone and it's uh, possible to continue uh, uploading uh, academic videos only with all of your support. So thank you to everyone and please do continue to share and like the videos as well amongst the academic community. Uh, one more point uh, uploading the video today that is the 28th of uh, February 2021 being rare disease day sort of fits in with the theme of the video being the dietary approach to inborn, er inborn errors of metabolism. IEMs of course being rare as such uh, though we see it as rare and general practice might not see it very often, it is not as rare as we think and as pediatricians this understanding of the dietary approach is essential. So it all fits in with the theme. So on that cause I would like to make a mention that I support Rare Disease Day and I hope all of you do as well. So uh, though I am not going to go too much in detail, the one fundamental principle of any inborn error of metabolism is simple. All biochemical pathways irrespective of whether it occurs in the liver, whether it uh, occurs in the kidney or any mitochondrial cell anywhere. A substance 1 gets converted to substance 2 in the presence of some enzyme. So like it says inborn error of metabolism, some error happens. So this enzyme is missing. In the absence of this enzyme, what will happen is substance number 1 will increase and substance number 2 is totally absent or reduced depending on the deficiency. So, the symptoms will manage and manifest according to the severity of the enzyme deficiency. If there is some deficiency, there will be some manifestation. Total deficiency, there will be a complete manifestation. Uh, fundamental understanding of that, that should be enough. Uh, moving forward to the classifications of the inborn errors of metabolism, in simple terms, we classify them as carbohydrate disorders, amino acid disorders, urea cycle disorders, fatty acid disorders, metal disorders and mitochondrial disorders. Uh, I will just make a mention in this presentation that I will list out a few disorders in each and speak only about the dietary aspect of each of them. I am not touching upon the clinical features at all. I am stressing on this again. This presentation is purely and purely focused only on the dietary approach. So starting with the carbohydrate disorders. The carbohydrate disorders which we commonly know of are galactosemia, the entire spectrum of glycogen storage disorders which we subclassify as type 1, type 3, type 4 and type 6. For the purpose of this, we will see it as type 1 under one heading and followed by the 3, 4, 6 collectively in another heading. Apart from this, there is also hereditary fructose intolerance and 1, 6 phosphatase deficiency. So coming to galactosemia, it is one thing which we always know, it is always told, always told in breastfeeding week that breast milk is contraindicated in galactosemia because it contains a high amount of galactose. So, uh, galactosemia is the end product which accumulates. So, if you are cutting out breast milk from the diet of the baby completely, you have to supplement it with something. That something is nothing but what we call as prosoya, which is calculated and used according to the weight of the child and the requirement. And children with galactosemia are preferred and advised to go in for early weaning. So, an indication of early weaning is galactosemia. Now, Coming to glycogen storage disorders type 3, 4 and 6, we will cover that first because it is quite simple. There is no role of nutrition and the only and only go is liver transplant because the defect occurs in the liver and there is a major defect. Coming to glycogen storage disorders type 1, the type 1 disorders uh, generally they are more prone to succumb to gram negative sepsis and hypoglycemia 
and the death is typically described in the book as midnight or early morning deaths. The best way to prevent that is by use of uncooked cornstarch which we also call as UCS. So the use of UCS ensures that that hypoglycemia does not occur, number one. Uh, and one general issue with this corn sugar and corn starch is it can be given only after six months of age. So in more or less in the weaning age. So these first six months of the child is crucial to ensure that it is taken care properly, number one. And number two is uh, generally the our South Indian diet what we call uh, which is predominantly rice based does not work in these children. So that rice based diet does not work. Instead like you can see I mentioned the use of pasta and legumes helps these children because it helps in the digestion in a better way and prevents the accumulation of the end products. Now if you come to fructose intolerance, uh, we all know that fructose is present in large amount of quantity in honey and fructose per se as such should not be given along with avoiding lactose as well. It is also important to make a note that we should avoid the presence of syrups containing sorbitol, some general syrups also which are available in the market which we use for various uh, conditions. I am not pointing out any specific brand but in general some syrups do contain sorbitol so those should be avoided. And a similar uh, type of diet is to be followed for a child with 1,6 phosphatase deficiency. Now coming to amino acid disorders, I am touching upon just 4, tyrosinemia, maple syrup urine disease, propionic acid acidemia and methyl melanoic acidemia. Tyrosinemia, tyrosine accumulates so you avoid tyrosine containing foods and you can give thiamine. The issue is tyrosine is generally there in pretty much everything. So that does become a challenge as such but it is better to avoid tyrosine as far as possible, number one. Then if you uh, consider maple syrup urine disease, we should restrict the intake of leucine. You should increase the amount of isoleucine and valine and you can give carnitine as a supplement. So the role of carnitine is there in maple syrup urine disease. Propionic acidemia, the concerned branch chain is to be removed and you also have artificial products which can be given in order to supplement, uh, in order to supplement in the diet as such per se. And methyl melanoic acidemia is where the concerned branch chain is to be removed. The idea of removing that concerned branch chain is the child requires the, um, the specific amino acids but only one particular amino acid is to be removed and hence you can go ahead and give it. Not to favor any particular brand but Meta Nutrition is a brand which is available which each powder comes with a specific letter or a subscript after that like P, P, A, A, B like that a different letter which denotes a different amino acid. That specific amino acid is removed from the product completely. Again specifying this is not a sponsored video but it is mentioned with the interest of being useful to the practitioners as such that such products do exist. Now coming to urea cycle disorders, just to touch upon them, carbamoyl phosphatate deficiency, ornithin transcarbamylase deficiency, citrullinemia, arginosuccinemia and triple H syndrome. The triple H syndrome is better known as hyperammonemia, hypercitrullinemia and hypoarginemia. Now the management for this is more or less similar so I am just clubbed it together. We know that urea cycle is involved in protein restriction. So the general tendency is to restrict the protein to 0.5 gram per kg. Subsequently general management includes sodium benzoate and sodium phenyl glutamate. Now the catch comes in the use of citrulline and arginine. Obviously citrullinemia you will want to avoid citrulline. Arginosuccinemia you want to avoid arginine and in triple H syndrome you want to use both. So in triple H syndrome you can use that. So in simple terms to put it, citrulline should be avoided in citrullinemia but in everything else it can be given. Arginosuccinemia you should avoid arginine but in triple H syndrome you should give both. That is the best way to simplify it. Coming to the fatty acid disorders, the fatty acid disorders are further subclassified as very long chain acyl-CoA deficiency, long chain acyl-CoA deficiency, medium chain acyl-CoA deficiency, short chain acyl-CoA deficiency. Now though we have classified it in 5 different ways and the deficiency spectrum varies completely, 
the treatment as far as nutrition is concerned alone is purely fat restriction and giving carnitine additionally though the classification is more theoretically if you go in, if we go in each of these cycles it will be a separate presentation in itself from a nutritional perspective it is only and only fat restriction and giving carnitine now uh, coming to the metal disorders hemosiderosis hemochromatosis and wilson's disease just to name a few hemosiderosis and hemochromatosis are disorders of iron wilson's disease we all know is a disorder of copper which involves both the cns as well as the liver in equal proportion now going into the theory aspects of any of these like i mentioned only and only from a dietary perspective iron disorders a diet which is low in iron copper disorders ensure that copper is completely absent in the diet completely dietary aspect is quite simple now coming to the mitochondrial disorders to name just a few mitochondrial myopathy lay syndrome nerve syndrome which is nothing but neuropathy ataxia retinitis pigmentosa and ptosis for completion sake i have put up mitochondrial disorders but there is no role for nutrition in mitochondrial disorders because the only and only treatment is a liver transplant so a liver transplant is the only and only treatment involved in mitochondrial disorders so with that i have just briefly touched upon everything as far as the dietary aspect is concerned uh to just quickly sum up and go back in the order in which we came mitochondrial disorders the only treatment is liver transplantation metal disorders the only uh, nutritional advice what we can give is avoid the restrictive toxin fatty acid disorders you this we restrict the fat and give carnitine extra urea cycle disorders we generally restrict the protein give sodium benzoate and sodium phenylglutamate citrulline arginine depending on the deficiency as such amino acid disorders uh, we generally avoid certain specific amino acids and restrict other amino acids and give others and if it's a concerned brand chain uh, amino acid specifically to be removed products are there which are available for that carbohydrate disorders avoid certain food items and give certain food items like we discussed already so that is a simplified birds eye view of everything on that note i come back to where i started today being their disease day uh, all of us in the scientific community as pediatricians uh, hopefully we can all take a pledge to do more for these children because there is a lot more what we can do and the change has to start with us on that note i thank you all for uh, tuning into this video and uh, thank you all for the support and encouragement towards the channel and hope that this video has gone to some extent towards helping a child suffering with a rare disease somewhere thank you everyone once again and hope you join next time as well thank you